Hello and welcome to this edition of Extension Ed Talks as we move from beyond the basics of bread making into actually using our dough for multiple um, purposes and all the different things that you can do with it. I am Erin Peter Sully from the Walnut Creek District which serves Rush, Ness and Lane counties. And I'm Anna Schremer from the Phillips Rooks Extension District and I'm housed here at Phillipsburg and serve uh, the Rooks County also besides Phillips County. Okay, so let's get started. What okay. do we have here? We have a uh, bread dough that this is the uh, first rise of a bread dough and you can see it, it's uh, kind of airy looking and it's almost up above the top of the bowl and uh, this is when they say you can punch your dough down. All it means is you go ahead and punch it down and it lets the big air bubbles out. Don't knead it, don't work with it, otherwise it's, you're going to have to let it rest again before you actually can use it. Uh, this is the second rise. This is a loaf of bread that uh, has, we've uh, shaped it and then we've let it rise until it's double in size and it's just just ready to go into the oven and then we're going to get started here with making some beer rocks. Uh, this is the refrigerator dough and uh, it's a very versatile dough. Uh, we're going to start first with uh, doing beer rocks. Uh, I've divided some dough into three pieces and then uh, when I when I do my dough, and I think, Erin, you'll have to say how you like to do it, but I don't like to add any more flour, and this comes from years of teaching uh, high school students, oh, yeah. because if you say anything about flour, the next thing you know, it is so stiff you can't move it. So uh, I use just spray, and I spray my countertop, and then I also took their rolling pins away and just use my hands because rolling pins, uh, you have a tendency to stretch that dough and break those gluten strands. And so I spray my countertop and then, um, yes, uh, take my hands and then I just press it out, the dough out. And when making beer rocks, um, you just need a circle yeah, and there's going to be lots of different ways um, to do that, whether you do start there, if you can control your use of the <laughs> rolling pin, you yes, can use that. Yes, exactly. Um, if you were, went to school um, at our high school, our cooks would have rolled this all out and would have mm -hmm. taken the um, metal coffee cans and they would have punched those all out so that you yes. all had these perfect little circles and you would have mm -hmm. pulled them up and you would have mm -hmm. done kind of the whole pizza thing and stretched them out mm -hmm. um, that way. Yes, there's a, there's a lot of ways you can use your rolling pin. I have my grandmother's rolling pin, and she would use the rolling pin because that's all I ever see, saw her do. But I kind of did that through survival with, with high school students, I think. Sure. So um, the next thing, uh, you can make beer rocks. Uh, sometimes they're called Hot Pockets, uh, Renzes. There's calzones. Calzones, all sorts of different ways. Uh, the traditional is your kraut. Uh, or your uh, cabbage and hamburger and onions uh, mixed together. Uh, but today we're going to do ham and cheese. This is one of my favorite ones to do. Um, I just purchased uh, diced ham. Now you can use sliced ham. You can use a cubed ham. Uh, when, I was going to say, when Easter is done or the holidays are done and you have leftover ham from there, cut it, put it in here so that it works. Um, that makes a really nice ham and cheese roll as well. Whatever you have, use some of those making over your leftovers and making them into something different uh, works really well. She's also got shredded cheese um, that she used. Sliced cheese works just as well mm -hmm. um, for doing these. These are a staple in our house. So um, something is wrong if you cannot walk out to my freezer and find one of these. They're in the shoe boxes in the freezer, okay? Just to give you an idea of where they're located at. Um, because these are the, oh, where everybody's running late, and mm -hmm. what are we going to do for supper? They're very easy to grab out of the freezer, pop in the microwave for 45 seconds, and you can have a meal. Uh, speaking of the freezer, uh, bread dough freezes beautifully, and there's different ways you can freeze it. Uh, you can parboil it, boil it, Par bake it. There it's we go. <laughs> I could not get those words out. Uh, but that's where you would cook until it doesn't turn brown. It just basically kills the yeast and sets the dough. And then you can take those out and uh, freeze them 
and then when you're ready to use them, you can take them out, bring them to room temperature, and then finish baking them. And so at Christmas time or Thanksgiving, you need to have those almost done. Then you can go ahead and have uh, hot rolls like you got up at two o'clock in the morning and made them. Yeah, and you didn't. Um, the other part of it is, is you can actually bake ahead of time and then go ahead and put them into um, the freezer that way. When we do bake that, we want to make sure that they are completely cooled and then put them into so that we into the freezer so we don't end up with all of those ice crystals that are then going to create that moisture mm -hmm. when we have this. So as we are closing these up, we're simply just putting that seam, creating a seam, bringing them up. Um, freezing dough, if we were to do this, to just freeze dough like this in our freezer, because we can buy you know frozen right. dough at the grocery store, our freezers don't work like those um, commercial freezers. They're not going to freeze them hard enough, fast enough, um, et cetera, for it to really end up with a good product. So that's why when mm -hmm. Anna's talking about the par baking uh, or completely baking them, that's why we want to do that in our home. And then we just turn them, and then these are ready to go to the oven. When mm -hmm. we are doing something like this, they don't have to raise the second time like that loaf Correct. of bread um, over there does. Mm -hmm. uh one of the things I do is freeze. I do freeze the dough, and you can, but it's really for a short period of time, like a week to two weeks. And if you do that, you need to increase your yeast by one teaspoon because the yeast is more likely to be killed. Yep. And that's why if you have bread dough in that you didn't change the yeast and you left in longer than two weeks, it didn't rise, it's because your yeast died during that time. So uh, it's usually best to par bake them or completely bake them. But if I know, again, I have things coming up in a week, I can make it the week ahead of time. I'll go ahead and add that teaspoon extra yeast in and then freeze my cinnamon rolls, get them out that morning, let them completely finishing rise uh, and then bake them. Okay, so with that, that gives you just a few more of Beyond the Basics. And when we come back from the commercial break, we're going to go into some other things that you can do with your bread dough. Get total freedom from archaic phones with the Next Tech Cloud Phone. Take your calls how and whenever you want. In the office, on the go, on vacation, in the car, in between all of those places, you can make the call. So check it out. And when you sign up for a qualifying Next Tech Cloud Phone contract, you also get some great technology free, like a 55-inch Fire TV, three months of Next Tech TV Now, and a free Samsung S10e or an iPhone XR. Yep, all of it. Call and ask about a Next Tech Cloud Phone today. The team at Homestead Assisted Living is a proud supporter of the Hayes community. Located just west of the Sternberg Natural History Museum, Homestead is a warm and welcoming community where residents receive compassionate care from licensed professionals. If you're curious about senior living options for yourself or a loved one, make Homestead your first call. Our kind and courteous staff would love to show you around and answer any questions you may have. Call us today to schedule a tour of Homestead or visit us online at homesteadofhays.com. Kansas weather can be brutal on your home's exterior. A dry and watertight roof performance is a result of choosing the right contractor. At AquaShield Roofing and Construction, we use the most up-to-date products and efficient technology. We offer quality services, professional installation, and unmatched warranties, adding value to your home and providing years of trouble-free protection. Call AquaShield Roofing and Construction for a free estimate today. Plains Podiatry, the team's greatest joy is seeing you doing what you love to do. Dr. Rob Hens addresses all problems of the foot and ankle with leading edge capabilities. They travel extensively serving in satellite clinics near you. Their growth in southwest Nebraska is a direct result of the caring and personal treatment they give their patients. Let High Plains Podiatry bring the pep back in your step. Now seeing patients in Norton and Colby, Kansas. Call today, 877-345-3668. So welcome back. We are going beyond the basics of bread making and actually showing you what some of the things that you can be doing with it. In that last segment, we worked on the beer ox or the yes. ham and cheese rolls, whatever you, it is that you want to call them. So this time we are going to talk about pizza because what is more family friendly for those that are still maybe cooking for a large family or have young kids at home? We don't always think about bread making as something that our kids can get into, and this is definitely something um, yes. that they can get into. Oh, kids love doing this because uh, 
there's different ways you can make one big pizza like uh, we have right here or you can make your own individual little pieces uh, and give the bread dough to the kids they can help make the bread dough yeah, and sure. then uh, they can make that their own individual pieces the way they like them uh, my kids some of them only like pepperoni some of them only like beef some of them liked it all mixed together and then my husband liked supreme on top so this is a way they can make their own and be part of, of having that family meal. Absolutely. And when we talk about not only wanting to be able to make the meal, but as a way to use up the leftovers. And when we were talking about bread mm -hmm. basics, we made a crunchy bread. Mm -hmm. Well, the next day, maybe you want to use it, cut it up. You can put it into French bread or something mm -hmm. that way, but make a pizza on there. Go, you right. can put sauce on it, put your toppings and cheese on it, and go Great from there. Great after school snack. Yes. Uh, especially if you're a farm family and you have chores you have to get done, the kids come home from school and they're starved. This is a very healthy uh, and snack that they can fix themselves. They can put the uh, sauce on there, the cheese and the, the meats that they like, uh, or just cheese. I have one kid that just likes <laughs> cheese. Just like cheese. <laughs> so, um, yes. And so they can have a healthy snack and go mm -hmm. out and do those chores. And two to three hours later, most farm families don't eat till eight o'clock, nine o'clock. So uh, this is a, um, a good snack, after school snack, too. Okay, so in the last segment, you talked about when you messed with your dough using some oil so that right. you didn't incorporate more flour. Mm -hmm. This dough is a lot stickier. I mean, it's going to require that flour. It needs some of that additional flour in there. And one of the things that we haven't talked about, and we'll see whether or not this dough wants to cooperate with us, shows if we can make it show what you we want it to, is yeast. Mm -hmm. That dough needs some rest time because if you start working with this, and it'll do it some, mm -hmm. It comes right, right back to us. Right, and that's so, frustrating. <laughs> yes, but we have to think about that yeast is a bunch of little ninjas in there working, mm -hmm. and that just take a minute, probably more like five, mm -hmm. let your yeast rest, and then you'll be able to come and use it. Yeah, you can, you can work, and you can try and beat it into submission, but um, and it will somewhat. Mm -hmm. It 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 takes a. a it needs to rest, and that's at school. That's often what I would tell my kids: just just let it rest. Go wash your dishes. Come back, and of course, they really weren't great on washing dishes, but <laughs> they couldn't do anything with their dough, so they got their dishes done earlier. But that's you know, you know, just let it rest. Go do something. Go throw a load of laundry in, um, or go you know visit with your kids for see what their how their school work is, and then have them all come back, and you can make your pizza dough. Mm -hmm. We've also talked about how making your own bread can be a very economical thing. Um, you're going to have, when it's all said and done, depending on what kind of toppings you all put in there, anywhere from 5 to $7 into a pizza this size. And if you were, well, Casey's, when a large pizza's on sale, might be $9.99. Mm -hmm. I mean, and we're right. going up from there. So when we're talking about a way to save dollars, this can definitely um, be it. We've talked some about this being a family affair mm -hmm. you can make bread in a bag and that's not something we're going to go right. into this but mm -hmm. especially if you are dealing with somebody who's with some arthritis mm -hmm. that warm dough in a bag still being able to work it is a great mm -hmm. right uh, and that's and you can use just these recipes you don't have to have a special in a bag recipe uh, you can probably google online and find one but uh, this recipe, the recipe that um, I made in the last uh, segment, uh, it you can use it in bread in the bag. Uh, you might have to half it because you don't have that larger bag sometimes for the recipe that I had. But oh, uh, have especially if you have an elderly parent, uh, this is great. They can participate in uh, helping make meals uh, where maybe they couldn't. Uh, and they've done it for so many years, and now they can get back. Yes, they can to get back it. into it, still feel a part of it. Mm -hmm. You will see on the bread that I made, um, this come out of the oven, that there are definitely some poofy um, pieces to it. My kids think that's awesome. Okay, they want that piece that has really um, poofed up. Mm -hmm. But if you want that thinner crust the dough, um, you know, take a fork and stab it a couple times just to create some dense spots and it'll let some of that gas evaporate and. Definitely. Um, what is your favorite pizza? Canadian bacon. That's what, <laughs> Which that's is, what she's making today. That's what we're making um, <laughs> today. But otherwise, we do a lot of beef pizza. I mean, when you have 
when you have the hamburger in a freezer at, at your house, that's, yeah. um, that's that's probably the majority of my family is we always have to have the beef with, mm -hmm. uh, and they their uh, tastes have changed over the years. So now they they aren't just so specific on what they like to eat. But yes, talking about the cost, uh, making homemade is not only more nutritious for you, but it also is very economical. Uh, bread dough, uh, where you add the eggs uh, and a little more sugar to it, the uh, butter or oil, um, that usually runs me right around uh, $2, give and take how many eggs or how much oil mm -hmm. and such you need to put in. So. But think about how many rolls you can get out of that. Mm -hmm. uh, I can usually get a batch of cinnamon rolls. I can get a batch of rolls, a, a batch of, uh, or a couple of loaves of bread, and even a few beer rocks. If I happen sure. to have leftover, sometimes I do roast beef and cheese, and I oh, put yeah, that, that inside that, uh, that dough and freeze it, and that's a great lunch. So, um, you know, $2, right around $2 for making that batch of dough really and all the things you can get from it, it's very economical. So we've talked about pizza and the best, and given you a few other meal mm -hmm. um, ideas with that. When we come back to our next section, we're going to explore a little bit deep, uh, further into those cinnamon rolls and some of those savory, sweet things that we really um, appreciate. So join us in just a little minute and we'll be right back with you. What a girl wants in her home kitchen. Ease of use, flexibility, Fun, the latest kitchen design, Frigidaire Professional Real Stainless Steel for fewer finger smudges, a French door refrigerator, convection cooking, and quiet dishwasher. Have the staff at Genuine Appliance and Hayes demonstrate new Frigidaire Gallery Appliances to find what you want. Genuine Appliance at 1224 East 27th Street in Hayes. Everything a girl wants. Storage Solutions is now offering premier portable buildings built locally in Greensburg and made to withstand the Kansas weather. These unique buildings can be more than just a storage shed and are as large as 16 by 40 feet. Their 30-year warranty offers flooring and walls that won't rot, splinter, or crack and are finished with a urethane paint. Multiple purchasing options are available. Visit Storage Solutions of Hayes to view models or go online to customize your building today. The best part of our technology doesn't come from smartphones. It comes from a powerful network, backed by infrastructure that we're always improving. We invest in this network so that you get the most from your technology. It's a network that's going anytime, anywhere, for anything and anyone. For a limited time, get a free Samsung Galaxy S10e or iPhone XR when you activate any device. Next Tech Wireless, keeping you connected. At Rogers & Associates Insurance, we serve the Midwest. We offer home, auto, commercial, and farm insurance policies and provide solid options for life and health insurance. For those unexpected life events like hail, wind, deer crashes, fender benders, and the little things in between, we can help you ensure what matters most in your life. Let us help you design a plan that meets your needs and budget. Visit us online or call us at 1-800-569-0118 to learn more. Welcome back. So in this final segment, um, as we've talked about beyond the basics with bread, we are going into something that is probably my favorite of uh, making cinnamon rolls. Mine too. This, there is, I mean, it is wonderful to have a fresh baked roll come out of the oven and all those sort of things, but there is nothing compared to a good cinnamon roll coming. Exactly. And, you know, sometimes you look at the cinnamon rolls, you think, oh, how did they do that? And actually, cinnamon rolls are uh, very simple to do. As we keep saying, everything's simple to do. But uh, there's a lot of different ways you can do your uh, cinnamon rolls. I have gone ahead and pressed out my dough. Again, I did not use a rolling pin, and I sprayed my counter. Uh, and then I just put my uh, risen dough and went ahead and pressed it out. And it's a little thicker than what uh, I would do for the beer rocks that mm -hmm. we made in the last section, segment. And so uh, a lot of times I grew up with melting butter and putting melted butter on and sugar and cinnamon. Uh, but this uh, one, what I found that with uh, my classes that I teach, I make a 
mixture of uh, half a cup of, of butter and then a cup of brown sugar and cinnamon. And so then I just put that, uh, dot it on and put it on the uh, bread dough. So and go, oh, go ahead, finish up. Okay. I was going to say, you don't have to put cinnamon in your uh, mixture. You could sprinkle it on top. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we have not talked about with any of this um, is food safety. And we're going to take just a moment and touch on that is because there are people that will like to eat raw bread dough. Um, and one of the things that we need to remember is that flour is a raw product and it does have some safety concerns with it. You know, there are um, times when somebody will get E. coli from it or I don't know that we have so much salmonella, but E. coli is definitely an issue that we've had um, in flour beforehand. Again, just like with anything, it is not a problem when it is thoroughly baked, but it is a problem as a raw product. So we do need to be careful around it. We do need to understand that there is a risk when we um, are eating raw flour, but when we're baking it and all those sort of things, then that risk goes away and you have a great um, product in the end. Um, one of the other things that we really haven't touched on is how do we know when our bread is done? And you know, touching it, at some point there will just be a confidence that you have or an experience that you will understand when that bread is done because you've made it enough times and maybe you failed a few times um, with it as well. But you can eat thermometer as well. And you can do that with any, any of your baked products, whether it's cookies or a cake, you can use a, th um, a thermometer um, to get the temperature reading. And some of your recipes will specifically tell you what that temperature um, reading should be. So we're not going to go out and say, oh, it has to be 140 degrees because it really does de um, depend on what product we're making. Um, so you will need to watch for that. But know that that's another way that you can um, use. If you're uh, testing a loaf of bread like we have in the oven right now, uh, how do you test to see if that's done? So if I were using a thermometer, um, I'm going to go to part way down and it can go in the top. If I had just a loaf of bread that was on a sheet cake pan, I would come in through the end. If I don't have a thermometer available, tapping on the top of it is something that I want to do is, you know, just kind of give it a good thump and it will make a nice hollow sound. So just as another option, what's your favorite mm -hmm. way? I usually tap okay. and I uh, make sure that the color is right and then I tap it, and if it sounds hollow, that's that's normally how, when I take it out. Uh, as you can see, I really get into my cinnamon rolls. I get my hands right in there, and I spread it around. I know some people may not like to do this. They don't like to get their hands sticky and dirty. You can use a rubber spatula and spread it around. Works good, uh, but like I said, I kind of like to just um, get my hands in there. Okay, once you have your filling in, then you're ready to roll. Now, don't roll these tight because if you've ever had cinnamon rolls where the tops popped out, it's because you've rolled them too tight. It, the inside dough has to have room to rise too. So you just uh, gently roll them up and don't uh, roll it tight as you go. And like if this corner is a little, I kind of pull it out so it makes more of a rectangle. And then the, uh, one of the things I did not say is I didn't put any goo about a half an inch along this edge because that is pulled up and then you pinch it to the side. Okay, now cutting these, there's a lot of different ways you can cut them. Uh, if you have a nice counter like this and you don't want to get cuts in it, you can slide a cookie sheet underneath it um, or you can use a string. And we have some nice purple we string here. We do have nice here. purple string. And depending on how big you want your cinnamon rolls, uh, you can, um, I usually like mine, I like fat cinnamon rolls, so I usually go about an inch. And then you just place them in your pan. And again, get your kids to help with this. If they're mm -hmm. here, they can do this part and if they don't mind getting their hands dirty, they can put that filling on there. Oh, I kind of miscut that one. I'm trying to hurry. So um, the other, well, the other part is, so these ends, mm -hmm. sometimes that, you know, people don't really, they're a little bit smaller, they're a little awkward size maybe for what's going to fit in here. How many do you want to fit in here? Um, usually I go three across. Okay. So that's where sometimes you may end up, depending on your size, you may wrap those 
around. Maybe we throw them in another um, pan. You can do all sorts of things um, to make those ends look just as nice as everything else. So we'll get these finished. We're, we're kind of starting to salivate over, um, <laughs> yes. we're gonna have cinnamon rolls. So cinnamon rolls, unlike the beer dough, is going to, it's going to need to raise again. Um, so we're going to let these raise. They're going to double in size, just like we would a loaf of bread or those dinner rolls. Now there's a lot of ways, I like to put nuts on the bottom, either pecans or um, walnuts. And I also like to make sticky ones. And to do that, I have a mixture here of melted butter, a cup of, uh, half a cup of melted butter, a cup of ice cream melted. And you can use, I like using old ice cream that nobody wants to eat anymore. It melts beautifully. You melt and that together and then you put uh, two cups of brown sugar in. And then uh, I just cover them good and everybody says but all the goo will be on top no, no this goes to the bottom if you put it on before it rises and so then you just let that rise and uh, then you'll bake them at 350 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes you want to see it cooking in the center otherwise they're going to be doughy mm -hmm. so you want to see them I call it are they breathing uh, if it's breathing it's coming up and down in the center and bubbly then you know it's cooking and then that that's how you can tell they're done and then as soon as you get them out of the oven you want to turn them upside down on either parchment paper or I get a cookie sheet and line it with aluminum foil and turn them upside down and then people smell them they're going to be right in the kitchen absolutely so we hope that you this gives you a little bit more confidence that you understand um, some basics to bread making some of the things that you can do with it the economics some different ways to make meals for your family or definitely to enjoy a great treat and as, and as always if you have questions please contact your local extension office